morning, Wararapa. This is uh, Anna Cardno from Wararapa DHB with Wraparound Wararapa, a show brought to you every Wednesday morning on Arrow FM uh, with a view to introducing some of the support services that are out there in the community available to us to help us get on and live the best lives that we can. And this morning, I'm really excited to introduce Chrissy Penrose from Pathways, um, who is with us this morning to talk all about the Access and Choice program. Chrissy, welcome. Morena, welcome. Thank you. It's lovely to have you with us. And uh, just coming into Christmas too, it's really good of you to give up your time to come here and be with us today. Thank you. Is it all a bit crazy in the office coming up to Christmas, everyone trying to get things done before Santa comes? I think I think everyone is organised to do Actually, this year, it's like everyone's just cruising around going, no, I have got this. So that's fantastic. Yeah. It's been a crazy year, hasn't it? It's oh, been a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Been yeah. a nuts year. Yeah. Mm. yeah, and I think people just need to um, take a bit of, you know, family time and self time. I think that's super important. Mm. We've got some sunshine and some vitamin D and some warmth and just chill for the next couple of weeks. Fantastic. Fantastic. That sounds good. <laughs> I'm uh, actually on leave myself right now as we speak. This is me being on leave. Oh, <laughs> However, uh, it is day one of leave for me, starting oh, off on right. a radio show with <laughs> yeah. just a little bit of work at nine o'clock in the morning. And um, But it's so much fun. It's great coming here, having a chat to, to people to find out about sports services. And I guess this is probably a time of year that is um, pretty intense for people. Does the work, I mean, we'll, we'll talk more about the work you do, but do you see increased anxiety in the community coming through your uh, line of business in this time of the year? Yes, traditionally, yes. Um, I think traditionally the, the October through to December um, and then of course, there's um, the the from February onwards. I think you know people. Pe- some people keep um, a lot of their anxieties um, inside over this period of you know it's the kind of the fest of season and the silly season, um, and it, some of that dams up a little bit in February. So February's another you know. Um, time where um, we, we, our workloads tend to, you know, increase. Mm. But COVID year, of course, the whole 2020, um, there's, a, there's a definite increase, obviously, in, in um, m- mental unwellness, as you know. So people have, you know, they, it, it's been a very weird year, I think, for a lot of people. And it was nice doing the kind of the lockdown, had nice weather and back going back and in, then into winter and yeah I think by the time spring came we definitely saw an increase in um, people seeking um, some help and support. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting isn't it because when you know initially I think when it first started when the pandemic first started and we had that health response to the pandemic and people were very much thinking about those that were impacted from a business perspective mm. you know mm. uh, is your livelihood of impacted have you lo- have you lost your job you know uh, we were worried about the restaurants and, and all those sort of service type um, businesses that were that were clearly going to be badly affected by having you know no foot traffic and everybody staying at home and I think as times gone on we're starting to be more aware now that there is absolutely no one that has escaped the impact of mm. COVID and mm. of the sort of changed lives that we're in at the moment. I think every all ages, you know, from from children upwards, mm, it's just it's definitely. a really bizarre mm. uh, time for people. And one thing I've been thinking about recently, actually, and I have my parents staying with me at the moment down from Taupo, and I think about that sort of older age group, and I worry that this is going to be the thing that impacts and, and, and sort of em- is emphasised most for them in the last sort of decade of their lives, they're mm. going to be thinking back and be thinking about the pandemic. It's, it seems a really sad kind of time, doesn't it? Something that, that you know, marks marks our lives at the end of our lives for our older people just mm. to be focused mm. on a pandemic that sort of split up the world. Well, they're also the most vulnerable. So, so they, you know, they will be having, um, their, their, their lives will be, they'll be putting in different strategies over, especially I think over every, um, even autumn, winter and spring, 
now that they're aware they're going to be going okay so how do I keep myself as well as possible Mm. you know whereas whereas a lot of you know say teenagers don't tend to worry too much at the best of times but they're not in a um, vulnerable age group and even myself I'm not in a vulnerable age group and I'm healthy and that but I think I think we need to very much focus on the vulnerable age group and I think we all have a part to play in that mm. you know just but it must be you know it's sad for them that they have got to the end of their lives and yeah at, well not the end of their lives but you know and and the, these years that are me- meant to be fairly you know relaxing and they get to have do their own thing mm. that they have this Mm. This this COVID world has mm. come upon them, and yeah, yeah, it's certainly it's certainly changed lives. That's for sure. But there's been some fantastic good that's come out of it as well, mm. isn't mm. it? I mean, the difference in in um, the support services, and you're going to tell us a little bit about the Access and Choice program and and how that works for people. But some of this uh, emphasis on wellness, on support programs, on making sure people are networked some of the different ways in which we connected with people when people were stuck at home. I think, you know, the the, um, introduction of online education programs for the kids and and working and being able to do school and university and things from home and and all of those sort of advances, actually there was a a lot of really good stuff uh, that came out of COVID as well. So I think we've learned a lot. But, But bringing it back to the Access and Choice program, Tell us a little bit about how that works to keep people well and how that Im- improves people in terms of access and waiting times to get the supports mm. that they need. Mm-mm. So the um, access and choice um, has is really come about after the mental health inquiry mm-hmm. and what, it, what was determined was access to people that are experiencing some mental distress not an illness just you know life a couple of things have happened over time and life just kind of you know collapses on top of them so it's a distress situation and and one of the most common forms of that is anxiety of course I mean anxiety is a natural um it's a nat- natural human state, but w- when we get stress on top of stress on top of stress, and that and it just becomes we become overwhelmed. Mm. That's that's really what access and choices for us for people that have um, m- maybe probably more a short term need mm. for support. Mm-hmm. So. Um, what the government decided is to set up um, the access and choice um, avenues inside GP practices across New Zealand, and that so it's been rolled out a- across New Zealand as a um, model as such. And um, I'm I'm sure they'll be relooking at it um, mm. and seeing how well it goes mm, and evaluating it for yeah. effectiveness. So, yeah. so basically, to 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 access the Access and Joys program to get that support, it's through your GP. That's the usual route. That's the usual route is through your GP. So someone goes to the GP and um, you know they make mention of something that's stressing them you know maybe they're not sleeping well maybe they recognize they have higher anxiety I think depression sits inside that as well Mm -hmm. because I think um, anxiety and depression um, can go hand in hand you know the 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 elevation of the anxiety mm-hmm. then can put in a kind of a low of depression a couple of days later mm-hmm. so um then the gp will you know can say oh look that they'll do their clinical whatever they do with that person whatever their needs are mm-hmm. and that and then they'll say look i can um we have you know our access and choice team how about how about you know you go and see them. So from that point on, um, we are a free service. Mm-hmm. Um, so y- ideally you can get the same day appointment, mm-hmm. um, but of course every everything's busy mm. as, as these days. But we, we try and get 
to um, people that are referred to us as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have we have a, a health improvement practitioner, a health coach, and a community support worker inside the team here in um, Masterton. We have well, we actually have two health improvement practitioners, one health coach, and two um, community support workers in mm-hmm. Masterton. And there's also Carterton Medical Practice. So there's Fiora. Master Medical and Carterton at the moment mm-hmm. across the wider upper. Fantastic. And so it is also a collaboration between services. So we have um, two aura um, and pathways and um, te aura as mm-hmm. well. Te mm-hmm. aura. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so we can look after. The idea is is to just get a range of. Um, services that suit suit people so um, and we also have inside our bigger kind of umbrella we have um, some kaupapa Māori leads and Pacifica leads Mm -hmm. so that we can refer to them if we need anything to support people yep to provide a service that supports them and meets their specific needs so which is great so so even if um so fire order master medical and pathways involved if i for example go to great hunt medical center if if i'm registered with great hunt medical they can refer me if i require that service into into the access and choice program so that so anyone through any gp can refer through to that service the um great hunt Medical centre are not inside the access and choice at the moment. Right. And no, but somebody um, in Greytown can get that service still. Is that how it works, or is it just as it rolls out, it's going to be available in each of the each of the areas mm. over a period of time? Yeah, because it is brand new, isn't it? So it's just it, just it starting. It is brand new, and yep. I think um, Featherston Medical Centre are looking at coming online on mm-hmm. that. So. Um, they they will then and so the Tehawara community support person who's my peer yeah she's she's based she's mainly based out of Fiora mm-hmm. and also uh, Featherstone when they come on board but we can we can switch over so if someone comes through to me and we we discover that they are more comfortable or would benefit more from a co-papa Māori mm-hmm. perspective then I'll just transfer them over and you can and cater say, for that yeah, yeah and we can perfect. we can cater for that yep. and with the, and so if if um the Fiora community support person has someone come through that she thinks would benefit more from mm-hmm. it, my skill set as sure. such then we can so we can transfer them through but we're mm-hmm. trying to keep it so that people are as comfortable as possible absolutely you know. and so they get to know and Chrissy how does it work so somebody's referred into the Access and Joys program they come and see you uh, or any of the others but mm. say so they come and see you so do they have a certain set number of say you know several uh, four to six appointments or something that they have as part of that or you know how does how does that part work how are they how does the support roll out yeah, so the um, th- we we try and keep it to what's considered episodic care. Yeah. So um, it is, although we also have that whatever it takes kind of um, a philosophy. So if someone comes through to me and I can see that they need a longer term support, mm-hmm. my my role is is to keep connect them up with services so I see my role as the community support person is as I'm I'm a connector sure. I, I, I keep get people connected up so someone may come and maybe experiencing grief and that and so my role is to say okay well let's let's find out what there is in the community that can support you in you know working through your grief mm. you know so um, and um 
If people need a longer support, there are other services that I can connect them up with mm. that then, you know, can help them. So if someone had needs as you know, needs maybe some ongoing support, my, my role is, is to look at what's available sure. inside our community yep. and, and make those connections. And join those dots for them. Yeah. Because, you know, it's amazing the amount of support that is out there and the services that we do have locally that many people don't necessarily know about mm. and it's actually really hard. I mean, that's actually the basis of this wraparound Wadarapa radio show. Yeah, this, is, absolutely. this is where this came from. Mm -hmm. um, and it was around not n people not necessarily knowing what is available to them mm. and therefore not reaching out and uh, and there actually is a lot is a lot out there but at the moment it takes a sort of a a, a, um, a superpower to try and pull it all together because it doesn't seem to be particularly streamlined and actually those of us in the services don't always know exactly no, that, what and how things yeah, work yeah. that's right and, and I think you know they the they change sometimes and funding changes and contracts change and people change Absolutely. as well. I think that's a big thing, you know. Someone's been working with the service and they a person changes, they mm -hmm. tend to sort of back off and go, Okay, well I'm you know, well I'm okay at the moment and I'll just wait and see things mm -hmm. out and then that they don't you know, when when there's a need again that they just like, Oh, where do I go? Because then, you know, that person's gone. They feel because a bit bereft. Like people are, yeah. yeah, people connect with people. Mm. And much in all of this, we have all our services. People connect with people. And so one of the, one of the, um, our kind of philosophies in um, access and choice is trying to get those, getting the referrals as quick as possible. Mm. Because that, that's, that's a really, that's a much better practice to wellness absolutely the sooner people can you know mm. get connected with with support services the recovery is so much better mm. okay. which makes sense doesn't it yeah, i mean support where and yeah. when you need it yeah um yeah. and knowing that it's available and yeah, of course, that's that's uh, that's what we all need in an ideal world. But sometimes it's quite hard from a provider perspective to pull all that together. Um, and I think you're right with the Hauranga, um the uh, hey, access Ara, and choice Aranga. program. Yeah, mm, and mm. It, it, with with that sort of um, philosophy around care is supportive not only for those that need it, but it's also providing amazing support for our GP practices, isn't it? A for our GPs, yeah. because you know. It's really tough. I know as a consumer of, of health services, it's really tough. When you go and see your GP, you've got 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you've got. Often you've had to wait. Um, and, and you go in there and sometimes you feel like you're stealing their time, don't mm -hmm. you? You really do. You know you've got a short period of time. And even if there is a lot on your mind, you might not necessarily um, utilise that opportunity to speak to your GP because you know that you've just got that small window. So programmes like this where you can actually broaden that and say, look – there's something going on for you. We know you, you know, you need support. You've identified that you're feeling anxious, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling overwhelmed. Let's help you with that. There's this wonderful program and we can mm. get some free service for you. We're going to refer you and they will have the time. And I think that time factor is really important, isn't it? Yes, and I think that's one of the the large benefits from this program is mm. is when when people are referred to so if someone is referred to me I sit down with them and you know say okay so you know they'll explain what's going on for them and then our role is to say okay and we set a few goals sometimes it's just one goal mm -hmm. um, and you know and then we go through that goal if at that time they feel that they're they're okay and ready to you know sail on their own <laughs> kind of thing. Um, they can they can come back into our service um, whenever they like. Right, so they don't have to be re referred. So no. once they're a client and they've seen you, they can come back when they feel the need. Mm. That's empowering, mm. isn't it? Yeah, that that's yeah. must be really mm. useful and valuable mm. for them to know. Mm. Yeah. Because some people, you know, like so, some of the people, you know, that I've been working with, sometimes I'm, I'm, I only see them for two visits. And a lot of that may be just be them talking through what's going on for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just having that sounding board, it become, you know, who's, who's you know, 
totally doesn't know what's going on for them, that's enough for them, actually. Mm. Mm. And, and so I've had quite a few people that I've supported like that. Everything's just been a little bit of a jumble and it's all just got a little bit mixed up, especially this year. <laughs> and they're okay. But some, some of them we need to work on um, other goals and it's a longer kind of support. But I don't have, I'm not like a GP. Mm. I have got, you know, I can do, um, you know, I, sometimes I will see one person three times a week in the beginning because that's what their need is Mm -hmm. and then as as they go through and they sort of unravel thing or unravel the the all the you know stuff in their mind and we go walk-ins are we do a lot of walk-in support Mm -hmm. because it gets people it gets oxygen into them it gets them out physically moving and it and it just helps Mm -hmm. you know the headspace Mm -hmm. and that's so sometimes and sometimes it's a health issue for them to get out walking and get more active mm. and that so you know sometimes then we will we will uh, you know we'll set some goals and say okay well I'll walk with you on Wednesday how about you do a independent walk on a Saturday mm. and we just set that pattern up and then you know we just keep keep tracking with that um, I, I'm a firm believer in um n- not not staying inside any kind of service for too long. Mm-hmm. I think it's really important for people to actually go and say to themselves, okay, I've had that kind of support and I'm okay now. Mm-hmm. And then if something else happens, they've got my number. Well, that's got to be the ultimate so goal, isn't it? Independence. I mean, yeah, is, absolutely. Is I mean, so, so your goal for your work is to do so great with people that they don't need you again. I mean, that's, that's what you're trying to yeah, do, yeah, isn't I'm it? Yeah, trying to make you're, myself redundant. You're in trying their lives. to make yourself redundant. Absolutely. And this is something we talk about um, in the health industry, if you like, quite a bit. You know, if we're doing our jobs properly with that prevention and that promotion and that support for people to keep themselves as well as they can be and live their best lives from birth right through to the grave, then that is um, us trying to do ourselves out of a job because if we were yeah. doing that really well then we'd have far less people in hospital and we'd have far less need for, for all of our support services and, and people would just be well in the community in an ideal world we'd all be making ourselves redundant in the meantime <laughs> until yeah. we do that yes, yeah. um, we just need people to be able to achieve and to do that they mm. need to know what the services mm. that they can that they can get and, and when they need it I think the other thing too is that and I think New Zealand as a whole is starting to do it really well to empower people to understand that reaching out to get support is the right thing to yeah, do and absolutely. it's okay to yeah. ask for that mm. help and you know, I think uh, certainly around the pandemic, you know, since March this year, the the promotion of the 1737 text yes, numbers and absolutely. all of those online support mm-hmm. services and, you know, at the end of a phone supports have been far better promoted, I think, mm-hmm. haven't they? Mm-hmm. The advertising's been far better. I think people are aware that it's out there and hopefully people are starting to recognise now that, you know, Many of us feel over overwhelmed yeah, absolutely. at mm. some point. Mm. You know, some of us look like we've got it all together, uh, but under underneath we might be paddling like mm. mad. And mm. it's quite normal for people to have those experience those moments of anxiety. I also think that um, our GPs, our medical practitioners, health professionals are starting to get a lot better at sort of unravelling some of that, sort of digging into that underneath the, you know, you've come in because you've got a, a sore tummy or a headache or whatever. You're not but sleeping. You're, you're not sleeping. What's going so, on yeah, for you? Exactly. And I mean, that's asking a classic sign, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it comes down to, I think, I think we, we are, are moving a lot more inside our... Um, like all our medical systems as such, into a strengths-based mm-hmm. system, you know. So that's utilising people's strengths, mm-hmm. you know. Okay, so, you know, this is happening for you and you've been, ang- you know, you're feeling anxious and that. And so I always ask them, um, you know, what do you do? What strategies do you do to relax and to reduce your, you know, your your stress? And then, you know, we can make a few suggestions because um, it's interesting that a lot of people don't have those um, coping, coping yeah. strategies. Um, uh, you know, sitting in front of a television is not a not a relaxation, you know, mm. Mm. and that's so. 
and and then so part of it's an education but it's definitely we you know we're working on people's strengths what what strengths do you have mm-hmm. and and you know to a degree i like to expand their strengths because that ex- expands their confidence mm. and it and and it educates them to you know be be the master of their own you know destiny and you know you're the one rowing your waka kind mm-hmm. of thing you know so i think a lot of our services are working towards that that style of model that strengths based um, and which is then also evidence based mm, mm. model, and and it's looking at people holistically. I think too, you know. So so a ten, ten minutes inside a GP, there's there's just not that time, and they, you know, their role is to be that clinical person, and that. But then when they pass those over to us to the mm. access and choice, we're more holistic. Absolutely, you know. Absolutely, and that's. Uh, I think the beauty in all of it is is the seamlessness, isn't it? Which yeah. is where this is is striving to get to. Mm. Um, we've still got a very long way to go in health. We still, ha- it is an industry that is so complex. As you know, um, as a service, health in general is incredibly complex Mm, and mm. um there are a lot of silos you know that yeah and and people that it's very hard to connect but we're getting there so that's an interesting comment about the silos this um the access and choice was deliberately designed to be a collaborative yeah um, absolutely uh system so we have you know we have so we're we have so the medical centers and then we will have you know um some of the um primary health organisations involved mm. and then the NGOs. Mm, absolutely. And, so and, and that's where I think, uh, and again, that's that was how this radio show was birthed, was around mm. connecting everybody. And I think that sort of reaching out across the organisations does two things. It makes it far more accessible for people uh, to get what they need, but it also allows for a lot more cross-pollination across the services of people knowing what's available and actually yeah. taking mm. the opportunity mm. then mm. Um, to be more empowering for people by being able to um, refer them in the right direction and tell them by knowing what is available, what what is out there. Um, because everyone is so busy in health and you're all very yeah. focused on what's yeah. in front of you. Mm-hmm. But actually being able to have that peripheral vision and know what else is out there and how we can best support people in that whole of self mm. way, which is exactly what your role is, is that looking after the whole of the self. Yeah, so looking at someone, you know, like I might be working with someone a- along their um, anxiety levels and so we, we might decide that we'll walk around Henley Lake twice mm-hmm. a week and then they mention during that walk that, you know, they're looking for employment. Oh, I'd really like a job. So it's like, okay, what is available in Masterton to, you know, so that we I can put you direct you to the right people who can support you in that goal mm. you know i'm not a i'm 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 not a one stop shop i'm a connector absolutely yeah and yeah. and again uh, i just a note that we're running out of time we've got about 1 minute left to go so uh, it goes and so i was <laughs> worried about talking for half an hour it goes i was so thinking quickly. how are we going to do that it does it does and i just wanted to uh, to ask you Chrissy, just uh, before we go uh, any major t- any tips tricks what you would like you know if you can get a message out to people just on Christmas time on this sort of high anxiety time what would it be um, I, m- my advice would really be to have a little bit of quiet time and focus on yourself and understand your needs and to reach out mm. that's the big thing you know we are we are humans and we're not islands we are connective people. It's it's we're social beings. So reach out, reach reach out and find the right services. Even if it's a you know like even if it is a friend to talk to, and then you can go from there. Because mm. I think we all need a little bit of a someone who's a confidant, and you say, oh, you know, it's just it's it's all getting a bit much for me, and then go from there and don't you know. 
Be your best friend and do reach out to services. Yeah, be kind to yourself. Yeah, We've heard just... a lot about kindness, haven't we? Be kind to yourself. Get some help. And obviously, you know, um, the Access and Choice program is fabulous and really looking forward to seeing more of that rolling out around Wairarapa. Thank you for everything that you do. I'm sure <laughs> there are a lot of people out there that are very grateful for the work that you do, I think. Um, well, um, it's fantastic. I think we're all hoping that the government's going to see the large benefits that this is bringing to the the health, the general health of the population. Oh, I, d- I don't think you can miss it, really. I think if it's, we yeah. reduce stress, we yep. reduce a whole lot of health issues. Actually. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, and do ourselves out of business. Chrissy, it's been lovely Thank having you, you on yeah. the show today. Thank you for coming. Have a wonderful Christmas. And just for people out there, just a last message: if you need help, if you're anxious, if you're, you know, we've got these great programs, but one thing really easy to remember: one seven three seven text or phone. That's something out there that is available for you over the next couple of weeks of Christmas. Uh, when when you get through that period, go see your GP and ask for a referral to the Access and Choice program, and the wonderful Chrissy will definitely help you out. <laughs> Thanks so much, Chrissy. Thank you.